This video is really going to be the start of our discussion on gene expression. Remember that gene expression is the process of using DNA to create a molecule of RNA, and that process is known as transcription. And then some of that RNA is used to make proteins that the cell needs, and that process is called translation. So we're going to talk about transcription, but first I want to remind you of a few key differences between RNA and DNA. And there was a separate video on this, but because we are using DNA to make RNA, it is important that you realize the differences between the two. Now look at the names of these two molecules. Do you see how they both end in NA? That stands for nucleic acids. And so that's why this process is actually called transcription, because we're essentially um, writing the directions in DNA just a little bit differently. Okay, it's still the same language of nucleic acids, and we're talking about nucleotides, but there's a few key differences between DNA and RNA. Okay, so real briefly, um, when I was in grad school, some of my research involved interviewing teachers, and I would audio record them so that I could go back and listen later, right? And I would then transcribe the interview, which means I would play the audio recording, which was um, in English, and I would then type it in English. So it was the same language, which was English, but it was in two different forms, right? It was verbal and then written. And so that's kind of how you think about DNA and RNA. It's the same nucleic acid language, just a slightly different form, okay? So remember that some of the key differences between DNA and RNA are the number of strands, and that's gonna go hand in hand with shape. DNA is a double-stranded helix. So there are two strands that um, are, are kind of coils. They look like a spiral staircase, okay? RNA is only a single strand. And so there are three different types of RNA that we'll mention on the next slide. And so each of those types of RNA has their own function. Therefore, they must have their own unique structure because structure and function go hand in hand. So the, the shape of an RNA molecule depends on what type of RNA molecule it is. The other difference between the two um, is the sugar that makes up the nucleotides. So the D in DNA stands for deoxyribose, and the R in RNA stands for ribose, and those are, are the sugars found in each type of macromolecule. You can identify a sugar because their name typically ends in os. You've probably heard of glucose, sucrose. Okay? Things that end in ose are normally sugars. Now the big difference that's really gonna be applicable uh, during our conversation of transcription is going to be the nitrogenous bases present in DNA versus RNA. You'll notice that both of these molecules, DNA and RNA, have guanine, cytosine, and adenine. What's different is the fourth nitrogenous base. DNA has thymine and RNA has uracil. So if I were to show you a strand of nucleotides and said, you tell me which molecule this is, really you just need to look and see, is there a thymine or a uracil? If you see thymine present in the strand of nucleotides, we're talking about DNA. If you see uracil present in the strand of nucleotides, then you're looking at a strand of RNA. So remember though, um, think back to DNA replication. Remember when we separated those both strands of the DNA molecule and we created new strands of DNA and those newly made strands were anti-parallel, so they ran in the opposite direction, and complementary to that template strand. It's gonna be a similar process or uh, idea when we create RNA, 
So, but because RNA is only a single strand, when we separate the two strands of DNA, we're only going to need to use one strand to create the one strand of RNA. And the strand of DNA that's used is always the three prime to five prime strand, which we will refer to as the template strand. And that is because RNA is always made five prime to three prime. Okay, so we'll talk about that again momentarily, but I just wanted to plant that seed now. So the goal of transcription is to make RNA using a single strand of a DNA molecule as a template. And again, that template strand is always the three prime to five prime strand. Now during transcription, three different types of RNA are made, but we're mainly going to talk about making the messenger RNA. But technically all types are made during transcription. So the three types of RNA are mRNA, which stands for messenger RNA, tRNA, which stands for transfer RNA, and rRNA, which stands for ribosomal RNA. And we're gonna learn a lot about mRNA and tRNA uh, when we get to the translation video. So transcription is also called RNA synthesis because we are synthesizing or making RNA. And the RNA is made in three steps, initiation, elongation, and termination. And even though I'm going to, you know, use pictures to illustrate this, I always recommend um, finding an animation on YouTube to kind of help bring this to life. And I will try and find some and post them, but um, it's always good to do that, especially if you're having a hard time kind of conceptualizing it in your brain, which I certainly did when I was learning this material. So we only have one key player in transcription, and that is RNA polymerase. Remember, all enzymes, which are just specialized proteins, they have ASE at the end of their name. So if you cover up that ASE, the rest of the name gives you a hint normally as to what that enzyme does. So if you cover up the ASE, you get RNA polymer. That means that RNA polymerase makes RNA. Hopefully this isn't too surprising because think back to DNA replication. Which molecule made the new strand of DNA? That was DNA polymerase. So if DNA polymerase makes DNA, then RNA polymerase should make RNA. All right, so let's think about, based on what we know of transcription, where should this process occur in both prokaryotes and eukaryotes? Well, our starting material is DNA, right? That's our template. So where do you find DNA in a prokaryote? In the cytoplasm, right? On the inside of the cell. Well, where do you find DNA in a eukaryotic cell? that's going to be the nucleus, okay? So that the transcription will happen in the cytoplasm of prokaryotes and in the nucleus of eukaryotes, which is where the starting material is found, all right? So we just talked about the differences between RNA and DNA. So let's go ahead and get into the process of actually using DNA to make RNA molecules. So step one is called initiation. That means we are initiating this entire process. So looking at these pictures are gonna be really helpful to see what's happening in each step. There's text in the red box on the bottom, and that's really just giving you a lot of details about this process, okay? It probably gives you more than I'm gonna say. So again, focus on what's on, you know, the big picture on the PowerPoints, like my text bullets and what I'm gonna talk about. So remember that on big pieces of DNA, it's divided into segments called genes, and each gene codes for a protein. And so the start of each gene is, called, um, is the promoter, okay? So if you look at the picture here, okay, you see 
we're going to be copying, well, not copying, we're going to be using part of this DNA molecule, okay? Um, and we're going to be using it to create a piece of RNA. But the starting point for a gene, the beginning of a new segment of the DNA is called the promoter region. So we say the start site of transcription is the promoter, okay? Now, within the promoter are some important little sequences, and you see them listed on this third bullet. Um, we call it the ta-ta -ta box for eukaryotes and the pribnow box for uh, prokaryotes. Um, and for, for this semester, we're not really going to worry about the details of those, okay? So um, go ahead and just draw a line through that right now. Just extra detail that isn't really going to play a role later. But you do need to know that the beginning of a gene and the start site of transcription is called the promoter. So that's where RNA polymerase, our key player, is going to bind. Okay, the whole purpose of initiation is always to get your key player to the start site. But I want you to notice what's happening. Do you see how a little bit of the DNA molecule, which is the red and the blue strands, see how they've separated, which is similar to what we saw in DNA replication. But notice that RNA polymerase is only on or attached to one strand the three prime to five prime strand, which we call the template strand. Because remember, RNA polymerase is going to make a single strand of RNA. So it only needs to use one of those DNA strands as the template, okay? And in this example, the three prime to five prime strand is gonna be the, the blue strand, which is as the two strands separate, it's gonna be on top. So once RNA polymerase has attached to the promoter, that this small region of DNA opens up and RNA polymerase can now begin doing its job, which is laying down RNA nucleotides to build that RNA strand. And what you don't see in this picture is actually part of initiation is RNA polymerase laying down the first few RNA nucleotides. It's literally getting the party started. So then the next step is elongation. And it's literally just elongating or building the rest of the RNA molecule. Okay, now this picture came from a different book. So now the template strand, the three prime to five prime DNA strand is on the bottom. Okay, so please don't get confused by that. Um, but notice, okay, that the RNA is being made five prime to three prime. So check out this hot pink RNA molecule. Do you see how the five prime end is separate from the DNA? That means it's already been made, okay? So RNA polymerase is moving from the left to the right, okay? And it's gonna be adding RNA nucleotides as the DNA strand opens up as it continues to move to the right. So that means everything on the left-hand side of the RNA molecule has already been made. So we say RNA is made five prime to three prime because new RNA nucleotides are added to the three prime end of the molecule. Now, notice that the RNA molecule is five prime to three prime, which it always will be. So it's anti-parallel to that DNA template strand, which is three prime to five prime. Also notice that the, um, the strand of RNA that's being made is complementary, all right, um, to the template strand. That means base pairing is going on. So for instance, I'm going to try to draw this and see if it cooperates. If you look right here, let's see, is it going to do it? Here we go. Yep, look at where I'm drawing. Notice this G and C go together. And then here's adenine. And remember, RNA does not contain thymine, it contains uracil. So we have U and A base paired together, okay? Whoops, oh no, there we go. All right, so you still see this base pairing going on, okay? So again, the DNA is being used as a template to create um, an RNA molecule. All right, so we see anti-parallel and complementary features of both nucleic acids.
All right. So this is going to keep happening. It's going to keep adding RNA nucleotides until it gets to the end of that gene, of that end of that um, segment of DNA. Okay. So before we talk about termination, I want to emphasize something. Notice this long piece of RNA here, the orange um, line here. Okay. That's the messenger RNA transcript. Uh, sometimes it's called an mRNA transcript because it's the product of transcription. And notice how long it is, okay? So you can clearly see here where the DNA is opened up and RNA polymerase is making RNA, right? Using that template strain of DNA. But once this little open region has been copied, or I'm sorry, used as a template, the region of DNA closes back up and the molecule of RNA kind of hangs like a tail, okay? So this long region of RNA that you see here, that came from this piece of DNA, this whole region, all right? So once a region of DNA has been used as a transcript, that newly made RNA detaches from that template strand of DNA and the DNA helix recloses. The DNA is not permanently separated or permanently altered in any way. We don't want to mess up our DNA, right? DNA is important. So once it's used for transcription, it, the DNA helix just closes back up so it can be used again for other processes, okay? Now, as you can see in this picture, this gene, this segment of DNA ends right here. So when the gene is done, it has been read, the RNA molecule um, has been done. I'm sorry, the RNA molecule has been made. This process is finished. And so termination is just the act of RNA polymerase coming to the end of the gene, dissociating with that template strand of DNA, and releasing the mRNA transcript that was made. So now the key players are, has, are separated. We have the RNA that we need for translation and we are all done with this. All right.